Okay, let's play around with two-point perspective. We're going to uh, play around with some boxes a little bit and moving things around in space a little bit. We need a horizon line, uh, which we can also think of as an eye level. Um, it moves around as you move around, changing your height. So, I have a horizon line and I'm going to put in a box here uh, toward the middle. And this is the edge that is closest to me. So I'm going to kind of feel my way into a vanishing point. So it's going to head back and head back. Uh, so that's the side of that box is going to head in that direction. So out here, I have vanishing point one. Uh, and then over here, I'm going to have vanishing point two. Uh, I have put this one a little bit further to that side than this one. So it can look better um, to not have it completely symmetrical, which can look quite static. Um, but you don't want to be too close to either of the vanishing points. You kind of have this zone in the middle where it works best. So let's give this a shot. So I'm going to uh, have some lines here and I'm going to drop down the end of my box. So this is a side of my box going in this direction. Ta-da. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to pull this out. I'm not being too concerned about making perfect cubes. There are ways to do that in a more measured way. Um, but uh, right now we just want to get a feel for things. So. There we go, I've got my two sides, kind of like an open book. Now this is going to recede back to that same point on the horizon line. And this one is going to go this way. And that gives me the top of my box, which uh, really affirms where I am in the world, in that I can see the top of that box, that makes sense. Uh, it's below my, my eye level. Uh, yeah, I could move out here a bit further and make another one. Uh, let's make a taller one. And so uh, I'm going to make it the same depth as that first box. So it's going to come out like this over to that vanishing point. The top is going to come down like this. I'm going to raise this up. So now I have a nice tall plane sitting in space and it's using the same vanishing part. So I'm starting to see more, ah, in a sense, this is kind of more right between the two vanishing points. So here, this is receding faster and it's starting to turn toward me a little bit as it moves to the right. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's say that I want to uh, put a series of boxes out here that use the same size as this. So you use something we sometimes call this the fence post trick. Uh, I'm going to put an X in my box, which gives me the middle. I'm going to draw a guideline through the middle. Now, the front of this is going to hit this point, and then I'm going to put a mark. So, this distance in perspective is equal to this distance. Of course, it's getting smaller each time. It gets smaller each time as it recedes into the different distance. But, yeah, I can do that again. Bottom, middle, top. And I can drop a line down. Bottom, middle, top. So if you want to have anything that's repeating over and over, you've got street lamps receding into the distance down a road, you've got trees evenly paint planted, you've got uh, fluorescent lights in a hallway that keep repeating in the same rhythm. This is a pretty convenient way to 
make those things grow smaller and smaller as they go. So I'm going to put in a line for the ground of where this cube is. I'm going to pull this out until it hits that blue line I just did. This is going to come out until it hits that top point. Oh, I guess I could have just used that. So there is cube number two. Just using those measures that I dropped in there. Notice that these uh, top planes, right, they're becoming more horizontal as they move up toward my eye level. I'm seeing less of the top as it gets farther away. Makes sense. So this idea of using the midpoint to extrapolate out is really handy. And I can use it to divide something smaller to find the midpoint, or I can use it to extend something out. So you can work from what you know toward what you want to find out. Um, so for example, if I have uh, several windows going down a form, down a, down a building or something like that, I could use this to divide the space and have evenly spaced windows um, working smaller. Here's something else I really wanted to show you which is that everything here uses these same two vanishing points, but um, everything here uses these same two vanishing points because all of these planes are parallel to each other, right? This is parallel to that, it's parallel to that, it's parallel, parallel to this. Turn the other corner, these things are parallel. All of those faces are parallel. As soon as I have something that's tipped to that orientation, I'm going to need a different set of vanishing points. So let's, uh, you know, here's the footprint for this one, All right? It's in here like this, the box. Let's put in a box that is just got a slightly different angle to it. So I want one that's turned toward me more. And so this is going to be uh, I'm going to see more of this face and less of that face. I'm turning it like this. So uh, I kind of just felt my way through that for a beginning. But uh, you can see it's actually got to be a little tighter than that because it has to be on there. As long as they're all on the same ground plane and that ground plane is flat, they're always going to vanish on the horizon line. If you're something that's tipped, then that skews things in another way. But let's go for that. Now this is also going to go out to the horizon line, but way, way off my page. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so I'm probably like uh, a couple feet out there. So that's that's tricky, um, but also powerful. So now I'm going to start to raise up my different shapes here. I'm going to pull that up, pull that up. I'm going to take this out to my vanishing point that's way out there and pull this up till it hits that. So there we go. Box number two, which is not 90 degrees to the other boxes. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, so let's, let's build another one. Maybe we should uh, play a repeat with this too. Bottom, middle, top. Drop my line. Bottom, middle, top. Drop my line.
So yeah, that's kind of neat to feel that moving back in space, moving back in space. So here's another cube way up there. And it's on the same vanishing point as I've been using. So we have the horizon line, we have our vanishing points. Uh, so that this here close corner gets projected out toward two vanishing points and those vanishing points are used consistently to build different boxes. We talked about this strategy of measuring, uh, dividing something in half to find the middle, or projecting out, calling this the half, up to the top, so bottom, middle, top, to project out with a repeated interval. So these boxes are evenly spaced getting smaller and smaller in a progression that makes sense. Very useful strategy. Uh, and also, just to be really clear, that as soon as something tips off the same angle, uh, it's going to have a new set of vanishing points. So this cluster here is using its own set of vanishing points. And the one is way off the end. Um, so sometimes I have a big um, one by two piece of wood and a string nailed out there three feet out so that I can have vanishing points that are way out there and use the string to help me guide it in. So there we are, playing around with a little bit of two-point perspective.